Well, let, let's talk about one of the other two. We'll close out the AFC North previews with the Pittsburgh Steelers. Win total sits at eight and a half. To go over is even money. So if you think that Mike Tomlin is going to have his first losing season ever, and and the Steelers' first losing season since 2004, uh, you're going to have to pay juice on that at minus 130 to go under. To win the division, they are plus 350. To win the AFC, they are plus 1,600. To make the playoffs, they are minus 210, not to, plus 170 to make the playoffs. They are projected favorites in eight games, which I don't know how that's even possible. And their projected strength of schedule, the second most difficult in football over last season, went over the win total. But they had two straight unders before that, after four straight overs before that. Uh, Most predictable offense in the NFL. Check out this stat. If they had less than three wide receivers on the field, they ran the ball 70% of the time. And it didn't matter because they didn't play anybody last year. Now, they have won at least eight games in every season since the four. Uh, Defense was second in EPA last year, number one in DVOA. They return everybody except for Bud Dupree, and they signed Melvin Ingram in the offseason. I don't think he's as good as Dupree, but we shall see. It's better than not having Dupree because Dupree was injured for the back half of uh, of the season. So, oh, it's injured all the time, though. That's the yeah, problem. Yeah, exactly. Uh, Big Ben looks old. Uh, 28th in deep ball passer rating last year. 26th in completion percentage over expected. Not great last year. I don't know that another year is going to help that. The schedule was the second easiest in the NFL last year, and they did not address their pitiful offensive line at all. They ranked dead last in adjusted line yards last year. Uh, Najee Harris ain't going to fix that. Like he just he can't fix that. I, I don't I don't. You can put him out for passes. You can do whatever, but you you can't have a running game if you got offensive linemen that can't block. Like not it, not in this division. Not against the Browns defense. Not against that Ravens defense. No, those are the two teams you got to try to figure out a way to beat in this division. And the the Browns defense hasn't ever been that vaunted. Their front seven just looks so much better to stop the run. The the Ravens defense ain't nobody running on them. So. Now I, I say all that, and I've got this team going nine and eight, but I don't trust it. So I'm I'm going over. It ain't a bet that I'm gonna make. But since I am on the record with this, and since I am a Steelers fan, as much as I don't like the way that they have run this organization over the past few years, I'm still gonna go over, just trusting that Mike Tomlin does not have his first ever losing season. But I don't trust it. So I that's I'll go ahead and tell you that the the no to make the playoffs at minus two ten might just be giving away money. I've got I've got a question for you. Okay. It's a different over under. How many games over under until Mike Tomlin just chokes the shit out of Matt Canada? All right, they start off with the Bills. I think he'll let him get by with the Bills. Uh, you got the Raiders, you got the Bengals, and then I think at the Packers. I think that might be that well, might let's be the say, one. So, let's say the fourth the, game. Let's say the offense looks bad against the Bengals. All right. Like, let's say they win that game because it's the Bengals, but the offense looks like shit. Okay. It, and, it might be it might be the third game. It could be. I'm just I'm just saying at some point in time, I believe Mike Tomlin and Matt Cannon are gonna have a have a heart to heart. They're gonna have a very close conversation where either hands are on collars or uh, round throw. What what do you think the odds are that Matt Canada is still the offensive coordinator at the end of the season? I don't think pretty good. But I might be wrong on that. This is an organization that is about stability. There's a world where, you know, if they're not good, they make an organizational decision to just ride things out. I don't know that they've ever fired somebody in the middle of the season. I, I, they, I, they I you're probably right. They don't tend to they don't tend to do business that way. But I definitely think an ass whooping is going to be involved. Like, I might not be able to fire you, <laughs> but I can show sure slap the shit out of you. Okay. I've got this team going under. I got them 7 10. I got them close to the number. I, I think they're going to struggle to find wins because I think, I think their offense is predicated on quick passes, slants, and, and dump offs. And that's it. I don't think they'll be able to run the ball. I don't think they'll be able to throw the ball deep because I don't think Ben will have time. And, and I think they're going to struggle. I think the loss of Dud, Bud Dupree is huge. I yes. think that's massive. And I, I am a, I was a big fan of Melvin Ingram three years ago. 
but he hasn't been healthy or, or produced well in two years. It's been a huge disappointment for somebody who, from his days in San Diego and then to L.A., love that man. And, and I just wonder, when the guys hit the cliff, that they don't gradually get bad. They just fall off. And yeah, no, is, that's entirely well, possible. Is this what happened to Melvin, which I hope not, by the way. As well, it's, much it's, as I don't like the Steelers and I like making fun of them, I hope that didn't happen because I love him. I think there's a world where that hole that Bud Dupree left, it's, it's pretty massive. Well, it, it, there's a reason why Melvin Ingram signed for one year $4 million, right? That's right. Like it's, that's right. I, I was shocked as hell that that's the only money he got. I think the biggest JT, returning guy, by the way, for them, it, like it, the reason the defense kind of fell off towards the end of the season, I think, I think it wasn't just Bud Dupree. I think it was also losing Devin Bush. And you get him back this year. Yeah. Looks like everything's J- good to go there. And, and JT Watt should have another big game. And, and he's, you know. It, it, TJ, it. TJ Watt, right? TJ Watt, whatever. <laughs> it's, wait, listen, you're going to know his name by the end of the year because that's all they're going to do. They're just going to talk about him every defensive snap, just like his brother. Just, exactly. He was, he was just grandfathered in to he, they're going to ruin every football game for you if you don't like hearing their name. Yeah, that means yeah. he's not a good player. That means he's not a great player. He, you know, they're just gonna they're just gonna tell you how great he is every. Season. Oh yes, their even, their schedule even in even in snaps where he's not involved and they run the ball to the complete other side. At least, I'm I'm gonna run through the schedule right quick just okay. so that everybody gets an idea. When we say it is the second most difficult uh, projected strength of schedule, they open at the Bills. They got the Raiders and the Bengals. They play at the Packers. They play the Broncos. They got the Seahawks at home. They play at the Browns, the Bears, the Lions, at the Chargers, at the Bengals, Ravens, at the Vikings, Titans, at the Chiefs, Browns, and then at the Ravens. That, I mean, there's a world where they could lose like 12 games. Yeah, no, my like, 7 and 10 might might not be close to the lowest they go. You think Dwayne Haskins ends up getting that number two job at quarterback? It doesn't matter. I, I think it could because I think – Gary, that's the worst quarterback room in the league. And it's pretty bad. I mean, your, your options okay, are... Okay, hang on, hang on, hang on. If you take Watson out of the Texans, that, that was not a true statement and not a fair statement. It's There's a lot of bad quarterback rooms. I will say that. No, they're not. No, they're not. They're, they're, none of them are that bad. None of them are that bad. I mean, the Ravens went in great. Like, let's, Lamar, let's... But, but Lamar is so much better than everybody else, it doesn't matter. True. Okay? I would... Listen, let me tell you, let me tell you how bad your quarterback room is. I take the Colts quarterback room with Wentz healthy over your quarterback room. I, yeah, okay, yeah, I could, I could see that. I absolutely think Adam Eaton and and oh God, not Adam Eaton, what? The uh, Jacob Eason. Jacob Eason. I'm thinking of the baseball player. And and Sam uh, Ellinger. And, and yeah. Sam Ellinger are better than any of the backups you got. And I don't know that Wentz and Ben aren't aren't the same guy. Uh, behind Lamar Jackson, you got Trace McSorley and Tyler Huntley. Uh, who who have the Ravens got as their backups? You just it's, said Trace McSorley. I mean, not the Ravens, uh, uh, the the Browns. I'm sorry. The Browns have Case Keenum. Case Keenum's a serviceable. He, he won yeah. a playoff game. He's, yeah. he's fine. Like, serviceable like guy. Serviceable guy. So, yeah, uh, Case Keenum and then Kyle Loletta. So, yeah, the quarterback rooms are, you know, once you're paying these guys so much, you can't uh, you can't really afford, you know, a bunch of good guys there. But, uh, but you don't need. But you just need one, and then some young guy with a little bit of fire talent, or an old guy. The problem is, is your your starter is is just busted. Yes, yes. And then they brought him back for another year, and the owners said that this might not be his last season there. Oh, we're going extending. We're gonna give him an extension, Gary. He'll be forty years old playing quarterback for the Steelers with a a noodle arm, the same as Drew Brees, I guess. Just the difference is, is Drew Brees had a brain. Could pick defenses apart. Yeah, and he, he was still checks, and he could yeah. he could he. Drew Brees knew how to play the quarterback position. Ben Roethlisberger knows how to be big as shit, not get sacked because he's big as shit, and throw the ball really far. That's what he knows how to do. And when he can't but throw the ball very far anymore, then take away the throwing the ball very far. <laughs> and at some point in time, your old ass ain't gonna be hard to bring down. You're just gonna be a big tree falling in the woods. Exactly. Exactly. All right, so you got them going under. I've got them going over. I don't feel great about it. The only one that I feel great about in this division is the Browns going going over. Yeah, like the Browns and the Steelers are two bets that I'll actually I'll actually hold tickets for those. The other two, I'm too close to where I think they're going to be to where I wouldn't I wouldn't touch them. I can I can get down with that. I can get down with that. 
All right. Thanks for listening to the Winning Cures Everything podcast. The website is winningcureseverything.com, and if you want to connect with us, we're on Twitter, at GaryWCE, at ChrisBGiannini, at Winning Cures, or you can email us, Gary at winningcureseverything.com, or Chris at winningcureseverything.com. Subscribe everywhere you need to subscribe, and we'll see you soon.